Hey everybody, welcome to Off the Rack, I'm Sal. And I'm Tiffany. Normally we talk about comic books on this show, but sometimes they make a comic book movie, and then we gotta talk about that too. <laughs> uh, we also like to talk about these movies. I used to actually start uh, talking about things professionally, or at least critically, with movies. Yeah. And then I went into comics, my first love. Uh, before you, of course. Oh, well, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> comics came first, and, they o- they- and they'll be there long after. You were gonna say, and they always and will. And they always will be. That's fair. Oh... So we're talking about Into the Spider-Verse. So we're talking about Into the Spider-Verse. It is a huge Sony Spider-Man release. Yep. Uh, and so we're going to talk about it. We saw it. And yeah. I'm really excited about it. Because now, I mean, we, we actually could have talked about it a couple days ago. I know. I really hope I remember everything. I know. We will. We'll be fine. Because it's, it's a little early, so. Right? Yeah. And not because we're not special. That, no, not at all. It just was randomly available a week early at our theater. We're so like, we saw it. Okay. And I was like, man, we should record that like right then. And we didn't. So here we are. So it's happening now. But before we do, we wanted to throw this out to our sponsor of today's episode, mm-hmm. Audible, who you probably know as a great service for you to get audiobooks and other mm-hmm. kinds of great audio-related media. So we're going to we're gonna talk about them for a minute. Listening to audiobooks, let's face it, it inspires us, it motivates us, it brings us closer together, and there's no better place to listen than Audible. Get your first audiobook free along with two selected Audible original titles and exclusive fitness programs when you start a 30-day trial. You just visit audible.com slash comic pop or text comic pop to 500 500 to get started. It's also in the description below this video. So if you go there, you'll also find it. Yeah, so go go down there and check it out. It's pretty cool. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I'm actually really excited to talk about this because not only do I like Audible, but I use it. Oh. And uh, it's a great time to use it. Uh, actually, any time is a great time to use Audible. But mm-hmm. the reason why I mentioned now is so great, and of course you know this as well, is because you can get a bunch of really great things available through Audible, for example. One of the things that I really enjoy, and I know you do as well, is there is a uh, Christmas Carol version on Audible <laughs> narrated by Sir Patrick Stewart. Yes. And it is enchanting. If you've, never, if you've ever if you've never heard Patrick Stewart's rendition of Scrooge, you gotta get it. Yeah. Especially now during the holidays, mm-hmm. it's just a treat for the ears. <laughs> uh, yeah, and and there's a number of authors that you are a big fan of as well. I'll let you talk now. Oh, thank you. Um, no, and uh, you've heard me talk about it before, but of course, uh, Neil Gaiman has a vast library of many of his books available on Audible, books that have been comic books and books that have not been comic books. Yes. Um, but you can go check it out. Even his most recent uh, publishing, or book, I suppose, uh, about Norse mythology. Yes, yes it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so if you want to check it out, check the description below this video, but you can also just go to audible.com slash comic pop, or you can text 500-500 and send them a message that just says comic pop, and you can get it for six ninety five for the first three months. Wow. I know. It's not a bad uh, It's That's not a bad Really good, yeah. I agree. <laughs> it's, I'm, I'm flabbergasted my own self. Right. But uh, check out Audible uh, and go over to audible.com slash comic pop right. or text comic pop to 500 500 to get uh, a great service and uh, for a great deal. Absolutely. And by the way, you can also, you, you can gift it. Ooh. You don't have to use it for yourself. Right. Let's say you already have it, uh-huh. but you know that everybody else needs it. You could give it as a gift this holiday season. Oh, that's a nice idea. By the way, a really nice thing about Audible, just before we go, yeah. is that you keep what you buy. It's like the Necromonger way. <laughs> uh, you, when you get Audible uh, and you download your, your audiobook or yeah. your fitness program or whatever it is, you keep it. That's yours. Yes. And you can download it on any device, right. regardless of where it came from, jobs or otherwise. And uh, and you can and you can keep it and you and you, it's not like renting you know what I right, mean where like right. you there's some kind of weird code in it and you can't keep the name that's thing. great and you can also listen to it on your Alexa you can so you just have her I'm really glad we don't the... have her in the studio right now because she would have responded immediately I know I said that very clearly so it's she true would have... <laughs> she would have definitely picked up on it but yeah you can listen to her on the Alexa app yeah and that's really cool so check out audible.com slash comic pop. And uh, text Comic Pop to five hundred five hundred if you wanna if you wanna text it. It's kind of neat. I like that. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So on with the show, Ooh, shall we? Let's do it. Spider-Man Into the Spider Verse came out this month. It was directed by three different people: uh, yes. Bob Burchetti, Burchetti, Peter Ramsey, and Rodney Rothman. Uh, I have been kind of cautiously anticipating this this movie right. for a while. Uh, ever since they announced, like, A, it'll kind of prominently feature Miles Morales, mm-hmm. and B, you know, it'll be about multiple spider people, mm-hmm. I was like, all right, I think Sony might actually have something on their hands here. Yeah. And indeed, I think, ultimately, they did. Yeah. 
they actually managed to, you know, if you wanted the quickie, the, the, the quick and dirty version of this review, for me, mm-hmm. I think they succeeded. I think it's actually a really, really good movie, and I really enjoyed the heck out of it. Yeah, I agree. All right? All right. Well, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Yeah, we'll see you guys next fun. week. No, it, it, okay. So, um... There, there was a bunch of people who also wrote this movie. I think it's, I think Phil Lord gets the main credit, but like, okay. there's a bunch of different people who worked on it as well. Okay, and that, can... I, that I didn't catch. I only noticed the, uh, the directors. When, right. When the yeah, credits. the multiple directors. Yeah. Uh, now you were a little critical of it, and I shared your criticism <laughs> yeah. regarding the three directors and regarding the the three segments of the movie because the movie really is like three parts. It kind of is. And here's the thing: I have, I have no idea how the directing of this film went down. I have zero insider information. So when you let's... have three directors, you have to. Assume Assume. It's not like they're all working together and they're just Look, like shaking hands. I maybe they are. I don't like, know. Ooh, this is a great shot. What do you think, I second just, direct? I don't think so. I, think... I don't know. All I'm saying is, like, I'm just, I want you to know my level of knowledge before somebody shows up and starts screaming at me. Right. Well, hey, maybe one of the three directors will pop in uh, and explain hey, it to us. Welcome. Um, <laughs> but um, my issue was just early on in the film, like, I want to say like the first quarter yeah. of the film, I was like, I found myself being like, the pacing of this is incorrect it felt right. like it, it was yeah because i it was hitting beats and checking boxes yeah that like, clearly needed to be done for story reasons right. and and i enjoyed like some of the character development but the way in which it was presented to us i was like something's off and i found myself bored at times which i was like i really shouldn't be because they're giving me this backstory that i'm interested in right. especially because i know they're taking like they're taking a version of miles and right. altering it so i want to see what the differences are and i liked what they did with him yes it's just that first quarter of the movie, it was just like, I don't know, there's something about it. And then we get over this hump. And then the movie just completely like, takes off. Okay, this is paced better. I agree. And I think it definitely has something to do with the direction. I think there is some mm-hmm. kind of weird choice. And it's also interesting because it's it's also the time in the movie where the animation is its most like deliberately choppy. It's the Spider-Verse version of the animation, which right. apparently Sony is now trying to patent. Okay. That, their style of animation, what sure. they did with, I'm like, feel free. T- go for go it. Go get your money. Well, it's like, I, and like, here's the thing, I'm all for stylized animation, and people trying totally. new things, and like, I, I really enjoy various types of like animation, mm-hmm. like either traditional or digital. Um, it was just, it was just a little like. It was a little, it was a little like, it was re, it, it was, was very stylized, to the point where it was almost like distracting. That's what I was going to say. I, th- I felt like at times, at the very beginning, it distracted from what was going on and what I needed to be paying attention to which yeah. might have added to that pacing issue um, but then later on it seemed to have like kind of evened out not that it went away entirely no. and I do wonder if part of it was just getting used to it or part of it was just that they backed Softened off it. a little bit yeah I don't know if my eyes adjusted to the animation or if it really did just kind of like yeah soften a little bit better yeah. I think once they introduced the, the other spider people the animation completely like shifted because everyone else had their own animation style anyway. That's, that is true. That is so they were true. like, okay, well, what's the main animation though? And it was kind of like, oh, well, let's 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 scale it back a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but otherwise, I think that regardless, because like, like you said, that first fourth, I felt very similarly. I was like watching the movie, like I I technically like it. Yes. But I'm feeling not connected to it. That's really what it was. Yeah. It was just that I couldn't connect with the material and i know the material is doing everything right, right. so where is the failure and it was in, i think in the direction yeah. but like it and once again i don't think it was bad i no, just think that because... first part was just kind of like hard to connect to no i'm sure a lot of people would argue with that because i'm sure you know because it speaks i was like this is a very specific style and it's doing something and i think it's really cool that it's doing it and i think there's it's going to speak to a lot of people like i guarantee you there's a huge subset of people who like Saw that first quarter and we're like, oh my god, I've never seen a movie like this. I want this. Mm-hmm. But like you said, I, I feel like it was a structural problem, if, if anything else. Yeah, like I, I think it, less of it that my issue with it rests on the animation and just with the way in which they delivered some of that early information. Mm-hmm. Because there are a lot of things I found charming. Like I really enjoyed um, Miles' interaction with his family, oh, yeah. like getting to know him, yeah, getting to know it. the world that he lives in. Like I enjoyed what they were trying to do Mm -hmm. but i just didn't care for that first like delivery of it yeah if that makes sense because i remember seeing the trailer and when they introduced jefferson davis uh miles's father yeah all that stuff is really really tight it's great it's it's it it pops it's beautiful it's fun you're like oh dad and son it's so cute Mm -hmm. um you even got a little bit of his mom and miles and like how she's kissing him on the front step and you're like oh that's really sweet when it was actually in the movie i was like i i recognize technically that I like what's happening, but mm-hmm. again, it was just kind of like, what? 
Like, why why is this scene here? Why isn't it here? Like, you know, it's it was yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah. And, like, there was a lot of that. Like, even when we initially meet, like, Spider-Man of that world. Peter Parker. Like, we're introduced to that, and then we jump someplace else, and I'm like... We should have started with Miles. Right. And I know they're doing the thing where you're like, oh, it's Spider-Man. We're twisting the you script. Think, yeah, right. Like, yeah, you no. think, oh, that's a protagonist. There's no way you thought that going into this. <laughs> yeah. Simply because of the trailers and the posters. So, like, well, and the way the movie's structured. There's no way that, like... You know it's... You are expected to think that Peter Parker... This is spoilers for the movie, of course, by the way. So, if you don't want to be spoiled, you know... Just plug your ears. Plug your ears or go see the movie, because everyone else has. I'll just uh, do this but, until he's done, yeah. and then you'll know. But, um... There's no way you don't know Peter Parker dies in this movie... And, or you don't know that he gets out of the way of Miles to be the protagonist. So, like, f- for you to try and bait and switch us at that point, it was like, why bother? Yeah, that's exactly it. I felt like the, I, I, I 100% agree. I just definitely think that they should have started with Miles. Yeah, like, absolutely. Because Miles is so strong. And yeah. honestly, I almost think he might be stronger in this movie than he was when he was first introduced in Ultimate Comics. Interesting. I really do. Uh, I think uh, I think uh, Shamik Moore did a great job infusing really, character. Really, really did. We'll get into the voice cast in yeah, a minute. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't okay. want to like okay. jump yeah, the yeah, gun. Yeah, no. I'm sorry. sorry. But uh, but yeah, uh, like you said, when we get to like act two of the movie, com- it completely soars. Mm-hmm. Um, I th- And I think part of that was introducing Peter B. Parker. Of course, the B, by the way, stands for Benjamin. He's named after Uncle Ben. Ah, um, interesting. But and that's that's canon. That's in the comics, so it's right. not like weird. It was. It's not like a subtle way to say like timeline B. Right. Even though it kind of it is. It is right. Sure. Um, but it's absolutely. Uh, I loved that inclusion of that version of Peter Parker. Um, it's funny because in the trailers, I remember being like really, really like put off by Jake Johnson's portrayal. I was like, that's not Spider Man's voice. Like I just straight up was like, I don't like this. Yeah. And. I also wasn't sure how to parse how he was behaving in the trailers versus how he was reacting to Miles. And I'm like, what's happening? Right. Finally, in the movie, when you get into the structure, it's actually really, really great. And sure. I loved Johnson's portrayal of, like, a early 30s loser Spider-Man. Right. Who also, by the way, like, can we get into, like, just the portrayals of that of Peter Parker before we get... Because, like, there's two Peter Parkers. Yes. You have Peter Parker A, yeah. who is played by Chris Pine. Right. Who, from... who actually, his voice... I didn't care for as Peter Parker. No, I wasn't a huge fan of it. I I got what they were doing though. Yeah, it's not like he was bad. I just I wasn't it's not Peter me. Parker. It wasn't for me. But you know what it was? It was it, you needed to hear heroic, heroic, yeah. capable, and like you needed to know even in like subconsciously yeah. that he's like gorgeous and awesome. And he's right, doing he, terrific. He's a heroic, handsome, successful. Blonde Spider-Man. Yeah, and I don't know if that's like a Ben Riley joke that like he dyes his hair blonde or something. But know. either way, they're just like it's Chris Pine. You're supposed to get winner from that, yeah. and you do. And seeing, I don't care about that Spider-Man. Like he's so successful, and he's like, and they made a lot of jabs at the Sony version of Spider-Man with like all the like dancing in Spider-Man like, Three yeah, references. The whole thing. Yeah, yeah. And that was pretty pretty fun. And, and maybe that was part of it. I was like, what what are we doing? Right. What are you doing? What. And you could tell, like, they almost like maybe they were going to cast Tobey Maguire or something as him. Oh, like, my Let's do God, that. No. I'm glad they didn't, by the Me way. Um, Tobey Maguire is one of my least Spider-Man favorites. Uh, but in any case, uh, the the Peter B. Parker by Jake Johnson, he, he, when you know, like, he's he's the Peter who, like, made bad choices. Or at the very least, the Peter who's, like, who is everything you expect, but, like, things got harder. Mm-hmm. And maybe, like, you know, his 30s were just a little rougher than he sh- than they should have been. Mm-hmm. Um, he loses Aunt May. He loses Mary Jane. Like, he loses kind of everything. And then... But he's still Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. And he's still gone through all these things. And he's still really capable. Like, he could be Spider-Man with his eyes closed. Yeah. But, like, that's not the problem. Right, right. He's also an older Spider-Man than, like, Chris Pine Spider-Man. Exactly. You know, and he's had... He's got more experience regardless of um, having let himself go a little bit. Right, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's, that, it's, that's it's, fun. Yeah, yeah. But uh, overall, that version of Spider-Man, the Peter B. Parker, Jake Johnson Spider-Man. Yeah. Easily one of my favorite on-screen portrayals of Spider-Man since Tom Holland. I love okay. Tom Holland. That's my that's my live-action Spider-Man now. Yeah. Um, but, man, I could watch a bunch of movies starring mm-hmm. Peter B. Parker. Right. As Jake Johnson <laughs> just, like, just fixing his life or screwing things up or, or training Miles. All the sequences between uh, Peter B. Parker and Miles are, are gold. Yes. No, they really, really are. And, you know, I liked it. Because, like, I know occasionally, uh, in terms of voice acting, that I'm no expert on this by any means. I know that occasionally they have the actors in the studio together. Right. And it seemed like uh, Shamik and Jake had really played off of each other really well. I mean, Shamik held his own. Yes, you know? absolutely. You, like, could ex- you would expect, like, 
you know, he's supposed to be playing the younger character. He's yeah. the he's the you know, he's the hero, kind of, because he's going through like the Campbellian like journey, oh, Peter's the sage. Yeah. Uh but like he's also kind of it, it would be easy for him to fade into the background when you have such a big personality like Peter Parker mm -hmm. and all the other spider people. Right. But Shmeek Moore really infuses character mm -hmm. and you like care and believe in that character. Yeah. At, such that uh, even though he doesn't go through like too much misery, you know, we get a little bit of Spider-Man pathos, but like he doesn't go through too much hardship. Yeah. You're still like, I'm rooting for you. Yeah, I mean, like, here's the thing. He's young, he's new to this. He's got plenty of time to have that Spider-Man bad luck. Yeah, he um, did lose his uncle. I was going to say, he d well, he, not only does he lose his uncle, but he, he thinks that this person who understands him the most turns out to be, like, a villain. Yes. And I mean, like, not just, like, in quotes a villain. I mean, a legitimate Literal costume villain. Costume and everything. Yeah. By the way, in costume, like, in comics, in canon. Yeah. And I loved that you didn't know that. I, I didn't. Well, I didn't know who he was. Right. I knew he was a villain. Yeah. And I just could not... You didn't not... know it was Prowler. No. I was like, I know his uncle is a villain. Don't know which one. And right. when I saw that, when I saw the Prowler, I was unfamiliar with him as well. Yeah. So, like, that was a perfect storm of just, there's no way I could put yeah. this Yeah. But when that happened, I remember hearing you in the movie, I'm like, he, 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 she really didn't, like, <laughs> she didn't know. She was surprised. Because for me, I'm like, yeah, this is awesome. This is really going well. And I like this version of Prowler, and it's a really cool costume. Right. And, oh, I see that he's, like, a subcontracted villain for, for Kingpin and everything. Yeah. Really, really cool idea. Uh, and it was just, it was just really well executed. Yeah. And um, Uncle Aaron, who's played by, and I, I'm, like, terrified to try to take a stab at saying his uh, name. Meyer Shala? Yeah, there you go. Uh, he's incredible. I yeah. think he's also in Luke Cage, right? He plays... Um, he plays Cottonmouth. Cottonmouth, and he is just phenomenal. Yeah, he's great. And he's like, just a great actor overall, he really but is. he really does give Uncle Aaron like some legitimacy and makes him like a really believable character. Yeah. It's very well-rounded, three-dimensional. Yeah. Everybody, there's almost everybody has a really, really great character in this movie. And like, like for example... Um, Aunt May is in this movie, and she is a character, mm -hmm. and I like her portrayal, but she's played by Lily Tomlin. Yeah. I was not a fan. I was fine with it, simply, um, because of the fact that, again, she's, she's a little older. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, I mean, like, like, I, I, I love her, her portrayal, I love the character and what she does, and that, like and voice. that version of Aunt May, I'm like, this is a neat idea, like yeah. an Alfred Aunt May kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, but li I, I don't know if I was a big fan of Lily Tomlin. I didn't mind it, and I actually didn't even realize it was her until we, like, looked at the cast list, and I was like, oh. Yeah. For me, I'm like, it could have been somebody else, but I, I can't for the life of me think of somebody else who would have done a better job. I really didn't have a problem with it. I think she did a very nice job of being, like, a, of capturing a warmth and, like, you know, like, motherly, like, sort yeah, of no, vibe, I mean, but at the same time being serious. And, 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 and harder. You yeah. You know, like, like, she's, I got, I got business to take care of here. Yeah. Um, we yeah, didn't... My... <laughs> <laughs> my like, boy is gone. Like, my boy is gone, and like you know, here you like got here you guys are, and yeah. like at the end of the day, like I'm not upset that you're here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we know it's interesting because this is a Spider-Man movie. Uh, you'd expect there to be a lot of like melodrama mm -hmm. and like you know maudlin stuff going on. Uh, yet there are the, the 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 you know those boxes that you check. You know, mm -hmm. like you get lost, you get sadness, but like when it is approached. You get that, like, they acknowledge it, but then they don't dwell in it. No, it's true. You know, like, Peter Parker from an alternate universe goes to meet up with Aunt May. Both of them have lost their own people. Like, Aunt May of yeah. our prime Miles universe lost her Peter. In his universe, he loses Aunt May. Yeah. And so yeah. the both of them kind of, like, fill each other's void for a minute. But, right. like, we don't spend any time in that no, experience. No, and I really actually appreciate that. And, again, yeah. this is probably we're getting into spoilers a little bit, so just... The whole thing's going to be Be wary, be wary. Um, but I'm just... I mean, like, this is definitely a little bit more of... Look, we've kind of already did it anyway, but like mm -hmm. I appreciate that they didn't go into it too much because it doesn't take away from Miles losing his uncle Aaron exactly. because that is the most important moment. It's true, for yeah. Our like, protagonist, yeah. If you look at the movie superficially, the mm -hmm. movie's about Miles. Mm -hmm. So as a result, like if we spent all this time talking, like because we know the audience knows the relationship of Peter and Aunt May, mm -hmm. even though we haven't really established it in the context of the movie. Mm -hmm it would be a disservice to those characters. So you're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah, no, I, I really like that because, like, honestly, like, that, like, I loved Miles' relationship with everybody in this movie. Yeah. I loved it with his dad. I loved it a little bit we got with his mom, with, with Peter B. Parker, mm -hmm. with everybody. But I loved it the most with Uncle Aaron yeah. because of the way that that story is told. And again, I wish the beginning of the movie had been a little stronger. Yeah. But, like, seeing how much Aaron really cares about Miles. Yes. And, it's, like... It, there's no, there's no, like 
deception except for what he does for a living yeah exactly and the like, relationship is genuine yes like and he values miles creativity but he also values miles education you mm-hmm. know what i mean like he's just like he assumes his his brother is going about it the wrong right, way. Right, but he's not grooming Miles to take up his no, life. No, 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 no. He's just like, dude, you got to be creative. You got to let off steam. But yeah. like, you still got to go hit the books, man. Like, exactly. Because like, you're you're the best of us. Right. In a sense, and no, like, so true. you get like a true like compassion from him. Agreed. And then when Miles finds out mm-hmm. who he is, like, that's so like heartbreaking. Yeah, but again, he doesn't like spend all, the whole movie in it. No. He's not trying to avenge his uncle like we've seen before in Spider-Man movies. Right. Uh, it doesn't haunt him the way Uncle Ben's murder uh, does for Peter. Like, Peter right. is like defined by the loss of Uncle Ben. Right. Miles is like motivated to do better as a result Right. Of it. And like, it's, it's funny because like, Miles is given the opportunity to follow the Peter Parker like revenge or oh, like, yeah. you know, being haunted by a path and it doesn't end up going that way because his father, of course, comes upon his uncle, and he sees Spider-Man. Yep, he and so, immediately like, jumps to a coup. Right, but by the end of the film, that resolves itself in such a way that, like, they can, like, care and like for one another as Miles and his father. Right. But, like, Spider-Man isn't, like, he... His it, dad's a, a detective or a cop, at mm-hmm. the very least. He's able to figure it out. Right, Like, yeah. we treat him with the intelligence he deserves. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and we're not, like, just trying to ape off of cheap and easy melodrama. Yeah. We're not gonna be like, oh, let's manufacture the whole, like, resentment of Spider-Man, and I hate him because he killed my brother. Like, right. no. No, we establish, like, his, like, uh, idea or, like, uh, opinion, I should say. His opinion of Spider-Man early on, just mm-hmm. being like, I'm a, I'm a cop. Right. And like, yeah, he's a vigilante. I don't care if everyone loves him and he always swings in front of a conveniently billowing American flag. Yeah. I'm the hero. Well, like, it's not even just I'm the, the hero. job is, my, is mine. Yeah, like, like, we're out there, we're doing our job, yeah. and, like, you know, he's just swinging around doing whatever he pleases, and I'm not, I don't care for that. Yeah. And by the end, to see him supporting... This new Spider-Man mm-hmm. that he doesn't necessarily... I mean, maybe he... Does, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know how point, he could possibly miss it, but, I like, think by the end, like, by the very end, he must know. Yeah. Um, but at but that point, to see him supporting Spider-Man, I love that turn, because it's, like, it's growth for that character without beating you over the head. Yeah. Like, we don't need to have a moment where, like, he's like, oh, he's a bad guy, and blah, 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 mm-hmm. and, like, I'm gonna wage war, blah, blah, nope. blah, blah, blah. No, we no. just... He has a... He is a, a character-building moment that lets the audience be again intelligent enough yeah. to be like oh look look at him look at him following right. without having to be like here's the sign of what's no. happening yeah, <laughs> it's, it's an oddly subtle movie that also features a cartoon pig version of Spider-Man yeah um, let's talk about all the Spider-Man that <laughs> okay. appear in this movie uh, who is your favorite Spider-Man uh, out of the alternates not like Miles versus Peter I'm just talking about Penny uh, Noir uh, and, uh, and Ham oh, and Gwen and Gwen uh, Noir yeah <laughs> Nicholas Cage playing Spider-Man Noir. Um, clearly, you know, just to, just like they they were like, we don't know who we, anyone could play him, and we yeah. know that Nick was gonna do a great job. He he really he's, does. It's cute. It's he's, fun. He's per- he's the perfect amount of Nick Cage in that movie. He's not swinging from the fences, but like he's going for it. Like yeah, he owns he's it. like giving it a character. He's, it's I don't know if I want to see an entire Spider-Man Noir film. Not the not that version. Of no, him. no, not not the Nick Cage version. I like I wouldn't mind seeing a regular Spider-Man Noir film. Totally. Um, but not that version because the reason he works so well is being surrounded by these characters who are a little more grounded. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they are not in a Pulp Fiction novel. Yeah, when he shows up and the wind is blowing, and they're like, Where, where's, "Where's that wind coming from?" <laughs> oh, is, it, it really worked. Um, that being said, I didn't feel like any of them were like tacked on or annoying. I did feel like they didn't really give much to do for Penny Parker. No, 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 no. Penny Parker was just kind of there. We're just like showing, look at the menagerie of spider characters. We yeah. could have done this the other thing, but like, let's get another female Spider-Man in there yeah. who isn't his daughter because we're already trying to do the whole like, because the idea is that like Peter B. Parker kind of like screws up his marriage with Mary Jane because Mary Jane wants kids and he doesn't. Yeah. So like, we need to have Peter and Miles learn lessons. Yep. Peter's lesson is maybe he actually wants kids through his tutelage of Miles. Yeah. If we introduced a female spider girl who was all, who's not Gwen... But it was like Peter's kid. Yeah, that would be it. Would be a cheat. Yeah, and it wouldn't work. Exactly. And it, narratively, so I'm glad they picked Penny. Yeah, because she's actually in the comics. She was created for Spider Verse, mm-hmm. which is ironic because the books, of the course. movie's called Spider Verse. Right. And I liked that they were like, oh, and we'll also play with animation. We'll, well make her an anime type. Yeah, version. and there's that. I think there's also like something to the idea of them showing with this character 
the variety of Spider-Man that exists yes. in the Spider-Man It's not mythos. all Peter Parker. Well, it's not even just that. It's not all, like, your standard, like, bit by a spider or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, like, you can, like, have a web swing and all that stuff. And, like... Yeah. Sometimes it's, like, a it's... sentient spider that lives in the side of a mech robot. Exactly. Sometimes it's that, you yeah, know? from the future. This happens. I was so concerned about that spider's life. Oh, that, I know. That movie. Oh, I know. <laughs> I was that, was, like, that was actual oh stress. God. Legit stress. Um, I, I also really loved Haley Steinfeld as Gwen Stacy. I yeah. think she did a great job. She uh, really did. I was surprised, but also relieved that they didn't get into the the, the Gwen Stacy stuff right. with Peter B. Parker. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I was really, I was, I, I've been wondering for a while what they were going to do with Haley Steinfeld because she played uh, the, the girl in True Grit. Oh, yeah, she did. And I was like, she's so good. She is. And I haven't seen her in, like, anything else. I mean, she's been in a lot of stuff, but, like, hearing her play Gwen Stacy and doing something else entirely and infusing it with character, and I I just, I I bought it. Yeah, no, absolutely. What I appreciate it, again, because this isn't a Peter Parker movie. Yes. We don't, like you said, we don't deal with the Gwen Stacy stuff. But we also, it's not a Spider-Gwen movie. So, like, she references the fact that her friend dies, but she never says who it is, and we never deal with that. No, we know who it is. Well, she doesn't, like... She says it in her opening, um, like her, like, all right, one more time. Yes. She says it in that. And so we as the audience who may not be familiar with this character, which was smart on their part. Yes. um, Now know. But again, it's Miles' story. Yeah. So she can deal with it on her own. She gets to see Peter again Mm -hmm. and, like, see the man he might have become. (laughs) Yeah. Which is a little disappointing for her. But Mm -hmm. at the end, it's not. Right. Um, But I think that that's so smart to do. Agreed. You know, like, we get snippets of these people. we, We see the fact that. Maybe this is an opportunity for them to, like, resolve some of their own issues. And maybe they do it on their own. Yeah. But you know what? This is Miles' like time to shine. Right. No, totally. Uh, I think out of all of them, we'll probably see a Spider-Gwen movie at some point. Because she did such a good job. And yeah. The, the suit I, looks this, so good I would film. hope so. I'm afraid that, that people are going to be like, Nicolas Cage is amazing. Spider-Man War! <laughs> it's like, oh, Just, okay. you know what you do? Do a short. Do a short. <laughs> you make Spider-Man noir shorts that happen in all the other spin-off movies. Right, or like they come, like you do a Pixar, you do a Spider-Man short before all the other animated Spider-Man movies. Yeah. And you just get a little taste of Spider-Man noir occasionally. Yes. Because he works be, in small doses. I'm really happy does. with that. Uh, similarly, Spider-Ham, uh, you know, I've never been a fan of Spider-Ham. I know you haven't. I, I appreciated that it was part of a joke that they made like yeah. 30 years ago. Um, and I like his character, surprisingly enough in the spider-verse comic um but uh, and what they did with him subsequently afterwards mm-hmm. um i was legitimately fearful for his life actually in the comics oh. um, and in the cartoon uh in the movie that is yeah. uh i felt like it was just an opportunity for john mulaney to be funny and yeah. i love john mulaney i think he's one of the best comedians like coming out right now mm-hmm. uh and i think that there's no mistaking that based on his casting in this mm-hmm. movie there's no way they were just like get john mulaney right like because we need to get John Mulaney in the movie. Right. They didn't pick him because he was right for the role. They just picked John Mulaney because John Right. Mulaney. And for me, I could have taken or leaving, or left that character behind. Like, yeah. Um, you know, they want to have... They wanted to do that. And they're like, you know what? It was a neat idea. And his animation, of course, set against all the other animations sure. was fun. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he was actually, I think, almost more wasted than Penny. Because Penny at least, like, looked really cool and got to do some cool things. Spider-Ham was literally just, like, every joke you could possibly make about Spider-Ham yeah. being in this context. Yeah, um, no, it's true. And and it's funny because there were a couple of jokes in this movie that when we saw it didn't land at all. In the theater. In the theater. Mm-hmm. And every single one of them belonged to Spider-Ham. <laughs> yeah. Literally every time he said anything... Just a stony silence from the yeah, theater. Yeah, and I gotta tell you, we saw the movie and there was all ages. Yeah, there. all ages there. There were kids, like, crying. Like, literal, like, like almost, like, two. Yeah. But there were also, you know, a couple ten-year-olds, a couple of, like, yeah, adults. Were, it was, like, a, very, a variety uh, yeah. of range and, like, it just didn't Just, hit. he didn't land with anybody. Yeah. Um, I don't think he detracted from the movie. No! And, like, so, like... No, they I, didn't overdo it. They didn't overdo it. I just, you know... I would have been interested to see a different character, possibly. I can't think of anything off the top of my I head. I can, and he appeared at the end of the movie. You're going to have to refresh my memory. The very end of the movie, there's a post credit scene. If you didn't, like, stick <gasps> oh, around, yeah. you need to, because it's really, <laughs> really funny. Yeah. Um, I would have taken either version. I would have taken the 1967 animated Spider-Man. Yes. Who had a really, really deep voice. I remember watching that show when I was a kid. Yeah. Uh, I'm not from 1967 i'm just saying like we used to have tapes of it but uh that version of spider-man had like this really weirdly deep voice and he said inane yes. things 
and oh Oscar Isaac's Spider Man twenty ninety nine. Oh my god! Yeah, I totally forgot about that. Yeah, if I guess in that instance, uh, nineteen sixty seven would have fit better for what they were trying. For what they were trying to do. To do. Um, yeah, because Miguel the, would have been capable and would have like solved the problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but I'm glad they didn't do that. But I also yeah. I'm glad they saved him for the thing because like listen, I want to see more Miguel. I want to see more of like this animation and what they were able to accomplish mm-hmm. in Gwen's universe mm-hmm. and in Nueva York for for Miguel. Yeah, those, I, those just look so good, right? I gotta tell you when they were like when we see Gwen's universe. That, like, effect they did to match the covers yes. was spectacular. That's right. I was like, like I don't know why. That's, like, the, the whole movie was very lovely. And, like, there was, like, so many fun things that they did. Yeah. But that in particular. That's like, right. That, when like, she's in her universe, you're like, oh, this looks That, like, good. blew me away. I was that, like. That's, that's the appeal of her comic. Like, her comic is oh, Rodriguez's yeah. art. But it was also, like, a, it was a random detail that was so, like, unexpected because it was something that was such a, like, not even a deep dive, but it's just, like, somebody cared enough to... Yeah, to be like, to let's make it that. her comic. Like, like, look like that. Right, well, I and, just, I didn't expect that. No, and it was interesting how much attention to detail there was when they were, like, when they would drop the comic book down. It was, like, it was easy for them to be able to... It would have been easy for them to just do that and it mm. would have appeased the, you know, hardcore fans, but yeah. then to make their universes reflect the actual comic they came from? Yeah. It's yeah. great. Can, can we talk about, like, now that you mentioned comic books. Yeah. Um, so, in Miles' universe, there was a Spider-Man comic. Right. And I don't know how I felt about that. I felt like we really didn't need it. Like, at all. Yeah. It was like, a weird detail that just didn't need to be there. If you're not familiar, or if you didn't see the movie and you just don't care about spoilers, there's a moment in the movie, there's a couple moments, actually, in the movie, where Miles will pull up, pick up a in-universe Spider-Man comic that, like, I guess is endorsed by the Spider-Man of that universe mm-hmm. that showcases his adventures. But it also shows him outside the mask and yeah. he looks and is Peter Parker. That being said, of course, he's blonde in the, the you know, human version of mm-hmm. him. And in the comics, he looks like Peter Parker from like 1960s and 70s. Um, it's a weird detail, but like you said, like, I, I don't get why they did that. Uh, yeah, I really like, I know they're using it so that he'll have a tool and a mentor since his Spider-Man is now... Gone? Yeah. Um, but... It just the the way that that works, right. and I think the idea is like don't question it, and I'm just like, but, but I can't help but question well, especially it. Especially because there's a number of other opportunities for Miles to learn the Peter Parker lessons mm-hmm. that make that comic idea and right. bookend redundant. Yeah, like now he knows who Aunt May is. He can learn Peter's lessons from Aunt May. Yeah, he meets literal Peter Parker. He can learn his lessons from him. Yeah, uh, but like there's other opportunities and avenues right. for Miles to learn from Peter Parker without like reading about them in a comic book that would mm-hmm. give away a secret identity in the universe that he lives in. Yeah, and I mean, he is a, you know, he, yes, he's, he's a little, like, he draws and stuff like that, so, like, maybe there's the connection to that, but he's yeah. also, like, he's a kid, so I'm kind of surprised he wasn't, like, going to, like, their universe version of YouTube and, like, right. watching videos of, like, people had recorded of Spider-Man, like, saying lessons or doing whatever. Right? That actually would have been really funny to see <laughs> Miles watching videos of Spider-Man, because you, you could definitely make a couple of really great joke moments where Peter, you know, rescues somebody and says, like, great power, great responsibility, kiddos, you know, like, yeah. just, just uncomfortably mentions all of his lessons in there. Yeah. It's like my uncle always said, you know, that kind of thing. But yeah. But I'm shocked that they didn't do that. Yeah, that just kind of threw me off. I didn't mean to um, take us off the voice actor trail because I know there's at least one on here I definitely want to talk about. Yes, we need to talk about it. Uh, that's Leif Shriver as yeah. uh, Wilson Fisk. I hated it. Was not a fan of it myself. No. He, and I, okay, Wilson Fisk, New Yorker. We're going to do a New York voice and it's very, it's very Italian New Yorker. Yes. It's a very much a mobster voice yep. Yep. that you would have expected to hear from, like, a Goodfellas movie. And it's not the voice that anyone, anywhere has ever given Wilson Fisk in any incarnation of his character. And in no way does it work for his character. Furthermore, I also am going to go a little step further and say his design was awful. Yeah, okay. I so- get they want to make him big. <laughs> you just drew a big, stupid square well, around a head. Yeah, and, like, so here's the thing. I think unanimated that that would be an incredible image because he is a wall of a man bill sinkovich has drawn yes pink and, like and that. so like i think it really works not animated but when he is animated and he's and he turns and he turns and he's also yeah 
but he's also in a world of people who, while being animated and stylized, are not that stylized. <laughs> they don't look like that. So it's almost as though they're saying, like, he came from a different dimension. Right. But that's Where not everyone what shapes. <laughs> like, it's weird. It was a weird yeah. choice. He is imposing and scary oh, and absolutely. a bad guy, and he's well rounded, and I liked that. Yeah, and again, had you just seen a, a, a straight up, just on a piece of paper image of Miles in that animation style facing this, like... The wall of a man that is Wilson like, Fisk. That's an incredible image. Yes, but then to continue it and, like, have him, like, go to dinner parties as a giant, like, square... Yeah, like, how does doesn't... he get into cars? Like, right, and, like, I anything? know that it's, like, an animated movie, but, like, the animated movie has rules know, that it needs it to does. follow, and so if I'm expected to live in that universe in my head for about two hours, yeah. I need to, like, buy the rules, and the comic and Wilson Fisk just don't work. No, um, yeah. But uh, that being said, I thought it was cool they made it Wilson Fisk. It was fun that they threw out uh, Ultimate Green Goblin. Yeah. Um, a couple of neat... Choices, oh, female uh, I was going to say, I really liked that character, because yeah. it actually kind of caught me off guard. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, totally. And I do love that um, moment when, like, Miles and Peter are breaking in. Oh, my God. And Peter B. Parker assumes the scientist, yep. and, like, Miles is like, it's her. Oh, well, looks like I have to... Uh, Re-evaluate. My, my, yeah, <laughs> my... like, this is, like, that was the sort of, like, witty dialogue that I liked from, like, that kind of second, right. or, like, second arc of the movie. Yeah, um, exactly. Where it's just like, yeah, all right, cool. Like, I love Miles, like, undercutting him in that sense without really undercutting him. Well, it's, yeah, exactly. But, uh... And, like, Miles being like, we gotta take... I'm gonna take the whole we'll take thing. Take the whole thing. Well, good news. We don't need the monitor. Right. Exactly. Really, like, really great stuff. Miles problem solving. I love it. It was um, really good. But yeah, when she turns out to be Doc Ock, that was, was a really like, big That's surprise. Great. That legitimately surprised me. It really did. And like, she is like really like truly villainous. Oh yeah. Like I really like enjoyed it, and I, and I kind of liked her design. Yeah, me too. With, like those creepy like organic looking. They looked like um. They looked like they inflated. They looked like they inflated, or they were made out of some sort of like. Like jelly almost. Yeah, yeah. Like, it was yeah. kind of cool because of how like unexpected it was. Yeah, they remind me a little bit of like snake skin or something. Just kind of this kind of like organic feeling, yeah. like inflatable arm. I yeah. loved it. Um, she and she also did a really good job just portraying the character. She did. Uh, Catherine Hahn did yeah. a really nice job. Very with nice that. job. Um, I I was surprised that it was like oh that was really cool good mm -hmm. job. And of course like she has a name that that reflected it. Yeah, um, Olivia. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> There was also another voice that appeared in this movie that I forgot was in it because oh he recorded it ahead of time. Yeah, and it was a punch in the, the gut. It was a total punch in the gut. And also, like, it, it, okay, so Marvel movies, in the MCU at least, mm -hmm. they do this thing where if you are, like, experiencing some kind of, like, real emotional, ex like, moment, yeah. someone is going to undercut it with a joke so yeah. that it doesn't hurt quite so bad or yeah. doesn't affect you quite as much. And... Sometimes it's welcome, and sometimes it's just kind of, like, out of left field and inappropriate. Yeah. This was uh, one of those moments where you're like, they didn't know it was going to hit you. Because yeah. they didn't they know, didn't know he was going to pass then. Yeah. Uh, but Stanley appears as, like, a cost as a convenience store clerk who runs a... I don't know if it's a costume shop. I or think it's a costume shop. But he runs a costume shop, which Miles gets a Spider-Man costume, and uh, Stan plays this costume shop clerk. Yeah. And... It's like, it really hits you when you know that he's gone. Right, and also because they, they do a caricature of him, yep. essentially. So it is him yeah. that you're seeing. And because you know that, like, they're making a movie and they're just like, oh, Stan, play this character. Yeah. They give him, like, a bit of business to do that allows him to be funny and undercut the feeling of, like, sadness you felt about losing him. Yeah. Without it feeling like they were doing it as a kind of, like trick yeah you know what i mean like unlike a marvel movie where they're like okay you're like i know that you're gonna feel bad but we don't want anybody to feel too bad during guardians of the galaxy 2 so we're just gonna hit you with a little joke with stan lee it was like it's sad that he's gone mm -hmm. but his little like punchline at the end of his sequence i'm like he doesn't even say it no it's so good it's so perfect but it, like, you you feel okay laughing is my point like you it's do. earned because like you're you're already starting to tear up yeah like, and then <laughs> so. and then you and then you're like oh that's really funny actually yeah. so i really like it yeah um overall the voice casting in this movie is stellar if you have a cast of thousands and the and like three of them aren't great you're still in the average of an a and yeah. i say this movie really only the only one that made me go, like, I really don't like that voice yeah. was Kingpin. Right. And that was it. Like, that was it. I think, I, like, 
everyone else did such a great job. Yeah, Lily so Tomlin for me, I was like, that's Lily Tomlin. But I, I would, ign- I deliberately ignored it because I was like, this is fine. I'm enjoying yeah. it. And she says like so few things. Like I was like, I was like, maybe it's not. And I was trying to like listen for it. Yeah. And because she only has like eight lines, it yeah. really didn't. There wasn't enough time. Yeah, and it, I know we didn't. Me- we mentioned Miles' dad. We didn't talk about oh, um, yeah. Brian Tyree Henry, and um, he is. It's great. He's phenomenal. Yeah. Like he plays a great father. Yes. I mean, like just so incredible. Hit this guy's range. No. Oh, yeah. Because like, not only can he embarrass Miles a hundred percent. I mean, like above and beyond I've ever seen anybody embarrass mm-hmm. their child. Yeah. Um, but when he comes and they have that conversation through the door, the door, yeah, like. That man, like, was able to convey so much emotion with just his voice. Yeah. Like, just so well done. Yeah. So I, well I done. Ha- having an entirely one sided conversation. Right. Exactly. No, so he. So incredible. Yeah. It's. He did a great job. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to talk about him too much, but, like, yeah. just, just overall, just like he. And I was, it's funny, because I remember that sequence of him and Miles in the car mm-hmm. has been in every piece of promotional material for the movie. So I was like, I was worried that that was going to be it. his... Oh, really? Yeah. It was. It, I was like, this is good. <laughs> That's what sold me on the movie. Yeah. That sequence, just alone. They yeah. released that scene, and I'm like, I'm in. Because <laughs> I also love Miles and his dad, and I like Jefferson Davis as a character. Yeah. Um, but I, uh, I, I think that I was worried he might steal the show. And he okay. doesn't. He no. plays a role. He occupies a space, and he does his job, and he services the story. And yeah. that's overall one of the strongest things about the movie, despite the fact that like the voice casting is so pitch perfect. Um, the story is also engaging mm-hmm. and fun, yeah, and also like hard hitting, and it means something. There's a yeah. there's a lesson, but it also doesn't feel overblown or bloated. Right, doesn't feel like there's too much going on, despite the fact there's like four or five spider people. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know. Uh, so I, I think overall, number one, movie's a success. Yeah. I mean, besides the fact that like it's already got rave reviews, right. Everyone's going to see it. Right. It's doing great. Um, it. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I did too. I have one concern. Okay. I also have a similar concern. Do you? Yes, I do. Do you know what my concern is? I don't, but yeah. I assume I know what it is. So let's hear it. What? Oh, okay. My concern is based on like I started like kind of reading through uh, critics' yes uh, reviews of this movie. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of like you know like you know like oh I know you have superhero fatigue but like this movie's really great or like this is the best Spider-Man movie I've ever seen. Right. My concern is that critics are going to convince a non-comic book reading audience that this movie because it's animated is for kids and that's why it's successful and that's why it's good and like it won't be taken as seriously as it should and mm. can be. Okay. Um, just because of like the way people interpret that kind of information. Yeah. Like ooh you know like. Spider-Man did really well because it was aimed at kids. Right. So superheroes are for kids. Don't do things seriously. And it's like, that, like, because the average, like, movie-going audience may not understand that, like, comics can be serious. Yeah. And it's okay. And it's okay for them to be for kids and for adults. And, like, right you know like it's not successful because it's animated it's successful because it was done well. Right. And the animation just happens to be really lovely. Yes. Um... Right, and it also happens to appeal to a wide range of age ranges. Yeah, so, yeah. So, that's great. Um, for me, my concern is, because I'm not concerned about that too much, at least I'm not concerned about Sony learning that lesson. I'm, no, no, I'm because, afraid that the average Oh, no, I agree. But viewer. like, But, if, but if, like, if Venom hadn't done well, <laughs> then Sony would be like, oh, we're only going to make animated movies, and we're only going to make them for that's kids. That's true. But because Venom did do well, and it was geared towards adults... Mm-hmm. They know now that they can do that. It really they right. can do and, anything. And Sony can do what they want, but I'm just like I guess I get a little tired of critics being so harsh on what they quote unquote call the superhero genre and being tired of it. I'm just like I'm sorry. How come nobody's ever tired of like the rom com? Yeah. Or like the historical drama. Like, right. Like no one's like oh there's too many history stories or movies in this in the, like this year. You know like nobody cares. Like it's not about that. It's yeah. about like wanting good stories and enjoying the, the yeah, experience. Yeah, and, and you shouldn't care where they come from or, like, you know, right. if that person wears tights. It doesn't matter. Yeah, and, like, no, I'm just worried that, like, this is going to inflate that critical argument. Big time. So, anyway, yeah. My concern is that Sony, having two successes off the back of Spider-Man, <laughs> is going to think that they can do no wrong and they're going to milk this cow into oblivion. I'm worried that Sony's going to think they're too big for the britches. I think that Sony's going to try and, like, throw their weight around. I think they're going to try and, like... Maybe usurp the, uh, the 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 deal that they have with Disney and Spider Man, and maybe mm. try to screw things up for themselves and for everyone else around them. I'm worried because I know that Sony, as a studio, 
uh, learns the wrong lesson most of the time. Right. So anytime, because because they've always been chasing that. They've been chasing it. They've been chasing this success, this franchise. Mm-hmm. They've, they've been trying to manufacture a franchise success since they got Spider-Man in 2002. That's true. So you can imagine that when they had the first hit on their hands with Venom, they're like, okay, okay, we can make a, like an almost R-rated superhero movie. We know we can do that. But now they've done the other end of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. They're going to be like, oh, we're a viable studio again. We can make anything we want as long as it has Spider-Man in it. And they're going to go nuts. I'm really, really worried about the internal insanity that's going on over there. <laughs> yeah. And so like, for me, like, I- I'm-, I'm hoping that that doesn't affect the inclusion of Spider-Man in the MCU. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm really enjoying this this actual like interesting world we're living in where Spider-Man can be a really cool Sony franchise mm-hmm. and also be in the Marvel Universe. Yeah, and like interact with characters we'd like to see him interact and if, with. And if Marvel wasn't owned by Disney, I'd be legitimately concerned. I'd be really concerned yeah. that they just pull and be like, ah! But because Disney is like a powerhouse, mm-hmm. I'm not too concerned, but it does give me pause. So, mm. that being said, do you recommend Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse? Oh, I absolutely do. Like, As do I. Yeah, I, I think um, if somehow you don't know much about Spider-Man, this is a really fun movie. Or yeah. like, even if, if you don't know much about Miles, like, I think this does a good job encapsulating his character, Agreed. even though they definitely make some changes. Um, I still think it, it, it's a really fun movie. I agree. And with a lot of heart, and like, again, like, yeah, it is for all ages, but like... But only in the best way. Yeah. The way that Roger Rabbit is for all ages. <laughs> <laughs> like once you sit at a certain age, you'll get all the other jokes. Like it's it's really yeah. it works. Mm-hmm. It works on every level, and uh, and I'm excited for the future. Yeah. Um. So there you have it, everybody. We just reviewed Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. We did. So we want to thank you all for hanging out with us and watching this review. And of course, check out the description below this video to go take advantage of our Audible uh, sponsorship because mm-hmm. uh, you know it, it's it's great for everybody. Yeah. Try it out. <laughs> but uh, we'll see you guys here on Comic Pop. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and click mm-hmm. the bell for notifications thereof. We'll see you guys next time with another episode. I'm Sal. And I'm Tiffany. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys. Hey, and they also didn't. Like, overplay Genki. No! If you knew he, who Genki they underplayed was, him. If you knew who he was, you knew who he was. I knew who he was. And yeah, that's they, it. they, I, I think they, I think they, that was almost to a detriment, but we needed Miles to be alone. Yes. Or, or to well, only be appealed to Spider People. Right, but now, like, he can go back yeah. in the sequel. Yeah, now we can get Genki. <laughs> and real Genki, not one of these not named Genkies. <laughs> All right.